Hi, welcome back to My Mom Life. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Jordan, and today we're making apple fried pies. To get started, I'm going to make the homemade pie crust. So I have some flour, ice water. This is ice cold water. You're not gonna use the ice, just the water, but you want it super cold. Salt, butter, and shortening. And then I'm also gonna be using a pastry blender, which is what that is right there. So I measured my flour and salt in this bowl, and I went ahead and mixed it up. If you wanted to use prepackaged pie dough, feel free to do that. I just was sharing this recipe with you that's absolutely homemade from scratch. You could do this easier and use packaged pie dough though. That they would be just as good. So I'm gonna measure and now the shortening, and then I will cube up the butter and add that in as well. I will have measurements and everything written out for you in the description box, just as always. So if you want to make these, check down below in the description box for all of the measurements. Now I'm gonna cube up the butter just to make it easier to combine. I'm gonna cut it into little cubes and then put it in there with the other ingredients. And then we will start mixing away with our little pastry blender. You could use a fork. This is about how big you want the pieces of butter to be. So I'm gonna mix it with my pastry blender. Like I said, you could use two forks or one fork, whatever's easier to kind of mix up the butter and shortening into the flour. You're looking for a fine crumb-like consistency, which I will show you here in just a minute. So this is the consistency you're looking for. You can see little pieces of butter and shortening in there. Now we're gonna add in our ice water. I have it measured um, and I added in a little bit at a time just so that I don't overdo it. You don't wanna add too much liquid because then you'll have to add more flour and it'll mess with the consistency. So just start with a little at a time and then go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and mix in the water. I have a wooden spoon here. Eventually I do go in with my hands though. It's just easier to mix with your hands so your hands will get dirty but once you get that water mixed with the flour it doesn't stick so bad to your hands so I'm gonna go ahead and mix it with my hands get that dough nice and combined once it looks like this I'm gonna go ahead and get some plastic wrap you don't want to over mix it just get it all mixed together and then we're going to put this in the fridge and let it sit for several hours. You wanna let this sit in the fridge for at least an hour so that it can get nice and hard. I popped mine in the freezer even and let it sit there. Now we're gonna make our filling. So I have four Greedy Smith apples. You're gonna need some cornstarch, salt, some lemon juice. You're gonna need some butter, cinnamon, and nutmeg as well as some brown sugar and some white sugar. The first thing I'm going to do is peel the apples. So I just took my little potato peeler and peeled the apples. I don't like apple skin when on cooked apples. I just think I don't like the texture of it. So I go ahead and peel mine. You do what you like. I also like to use Granny Smith apples because I think they hold up better and I love the tart with the sweet with the sugar, I think a, an apple filling that is too sweet just isn't as good as one that has a little bit of the tartness from the apple. So that's just my opinion. You can use whatever apples you like. Again, I will have the recipe written out for you in the description box. Once I get these peeled, I'm gonna dice them up into bite-sized pieces. Thank you. 
my nanny would make fried pies a lot and she would do an apricot filling and I need to get her recipe because I'm not quite sure exactly how she did it but um, making these kind of reminded me of her. So this is about how big you want your apple pieces to be. Because they're gonna be in like a hand pie, you don't want big pieces of apple because you're making little pies. So I actually made mine kind of big to be honest, but still they're smaller than like a traditional apple pie. So you want small pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the apples diced up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and juice my lemon. Then we're gonna get all of our ingredients and head over to the stove. I've got a big skillet that I have heating up here and I melted my butter in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of our apples. I'm just gonna let these kind of simmer in that butter for a minute and then we'll add in our other ingredients and let that come together. The only thing I haven't gotten out yet is the cornstarch that you do at the last minute. So I'm gonna add in my lemon juice. And then all of the other ingredients. So the white sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg. And then I added in a pinch of salt just because I think that it helps balance everything out. This smelled so, so good while it was cooking. These apples just kind of simmer for a little bit. It's perfect while your pie crust is chilling to have this going on the stove. You want your filling completely cooled when you're ready to put the pies together, so it's perfect to make it while the pie crust is in the fridge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a cornstarch slurry, which is cornstarch and water. And I'm gonna mix that up, and then we're gonna add it into our apples, and this will thicken up that sauce so that it's not too runny and it won't make a huge mess with our apple pies. So I'm gonna add that in, and you can see already, like immediately it starts to thicken. That's exactly what you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and stir it in and then let it simmer for just a minute. And then I'll pull it off and I transferred it into a different dish so that it would cool faster. So there's my apple pie filling. I'm gonna set that aside and let it cool. Once that was cooled, I went ahead and got my pie crust out. Just FYI, this pie crust makes a double batch, so I could have doubled my filling there and made used all of my pie dough, but I only needed half of it for the amount of filling that I had. So I went ahead and put the rest of that pie dough in the freezer and was just working with this one half. I'm gonna flour my surface, my counter is clean, and I'm just gonna roll my dough out, and then we will cut oval shapes, is the best way I can describe it. I just kind of hand cut these oval shapes, and then I set them aside, and once I had the all of the pie dough cut into these oval shapes for each pie, I went ahead and rolled each oval that I had cut out. You'll see. I rolled each one of those out even more to make it thin. You don't want too thick because it'll take too long to fry and then it'll get too brown on the outside. So you want not too thin, but not too thick. You'll see here in just a minute. You can see that marbling in the pie dough where you have the butter throughout. That's what you want. 
that makes a good pie dough. So here is one of my pies that I'm gonna end up rolling out again. And there's another one. Then I brought the pie crust back together and just did that a couple times until I used up all of that dough. All right, now I'm gonna take each one of these ovals that I've cut out and roll them out pretty thin so that you can put filling on one side and fold it over and make a little hand pie. Mine were not super little, they were actually quite big. So you can do whatever size you would like, but yeah, mine turned out a little bit bigger than what I was thinking, but that was totally fine. They were absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna roll this out thinning that crust a little bit and then I will put some filling on one side and we will close it up using some water to kind of adhere the sides together. One thing I will say is you don't want to overfill these because they can like explode on you when you're frying them up so just put just enough where there's a good amount in there but not too much to where it's bulging out of the sides and it'll make a big old mess in your uh, pan when you're frying them. Now I'm gonna fold it over and like I said, I use some water to wet the seams and that helps the dough stick together. And then I will take a fork and go around and press the side together just to close that seam. And that's it, I'm gonna set this one aside and keep going with our pies. I went ahead and got all of them ready to go before I started frying them because that just made it easier. So I'm going to roll this out, put the filling in, and then close it up and keep on going until I've used up all of my dough and filling. Now it is time to fry them. So I have my oil heating up. I was showing that you this trick. You can take a wooden spoon and stick it into the hot oil. And if bubbles appear around the wooden spoon, then you know that your oil is hot and ready to go. So I saw bubbles on my wooden spoon. So I'm gonna start frying them up. I just did one at a time because mine were quite large. Once they were brown on one side, I went ahead and flipped them and let them get brown on the other and then just repeated the process until all of my pies were done cooking. You want to place your pies on something that has paper towels on it. So a plate with paper towels or a cookie sheet with paper towels. And then I sprinkled the hot pies with just some regular sugar as soon as they were done. Just to give some texture to the top of the pies, you could do a glaze or whatever you want. This is just what I ended up doing. And here are the finished fried pies. I think they turned out awesome. They are rustic homemade looking, but I think that that adds to the character of them. And I think that they are beautiful. 
So if you want to try this recipe, check the description box down below. I will have all the information for you down there. Thank you so much for watching my video today. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and stick around. And I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>